Have you ever thought about self-hosting your own Netflix kind of media server and didn't know how to do it or what to use? Well, in this video, I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly what I use and what is actually available. Stick around. Hey, welcome back, you guys. Uh, in this video, like I said, we're going to go over a couple of media server uh, options that you might have that will actually give you kind of like your very own Netflix type of experience. Um, I know with in my case, uh, this is like one of the very first projects that I actually uh, started, uh, which got me going down this self-hosting rabbit hole. Uh, and it, I've, I've been keeping it up ever since. Now there's actually three major uh, apps that you can actually use to self-host your media server. One is going to be probably the most well-known, and what I'm talking about is Plex. Uh, there are two other uh, options, though. Uh, the second one that you can use is MB, and third one is going to be Jellyfin. Now, I kind of uh, put Jellyfin and MB in the same bucket, just because uh, basically Jellyfin is just a fork of MB. Uh, there's two differences, which I'm going to... Well, there are some differences between the two, of course, and I'll get through them uh, in this video. So let's dive right in. Let's start with the first one, which is going to be Plex. Uh, some of the things that I actually like is the ease of use. Not only is it easier to set up, especially as a Docker container, but it's also pretty easy if you want to self-host uh, using bare metal, uh, just a you know its own dedicated hardware. Again, it's a it has a more polished look, uh, and it's a little more user friendly. Uh, but I guess that's pretty subjective, depending on how uh, on who's using the server, right? But all in all, I think uh, a lot of my friends and my family gravitate more towards uh, towards my Plex server. Now, to be honest with you, I actually have two media servers. Um, I guess my main one right now is going to be my Plex server, and I also run MB. Now, I know I brought up three server options uh, with Plex, MB, and Jellyfin. And there's a reason why I don't use Jellyfin. Uh, but that's, uh, I guess it's just personal preference. One of the other cool things about Plex is that it does really well in downloading your metadata. Think of it kind of like metadata as who's in the movie, what the movie is about, and how long the movie is, rating, you know, stuff like that. Plex does a really good job with downloading that information. Another cool thing about uh, Plex is that it's just so popular that you've got uh, apps for basically every platform. You've got apps for your uh, iPhone. You've got apps for your Android devices. It's even got apps for your con uh, gaming consoles, Xbox, PlayStation. They have their own uh, Plex native apps. But you don't really need the Plex app in order to uh, enjoy your media content. You can actually also use it uh, via the web. One of the other cool things that Plex can do is you can stream live TV if you hook up an over-the-air antenna to a device like the like an HD Home Run. The HD Home Run has either one or multiple TV tuners uh, that if you hook up an over-the-air antenna to it, uh, you can actually stream live TV over your network, uh, except in this case, you wouldn't be streaming it over your network. You'd actually pipe it in through your uh, Plex media server, and uh, you'll be, you'd be able to watch your local TV from anywhere in the world, anywhere you've got access to your Plex server. Now, with every good piece of software, there's got to be some cons, right? You got to expect that. Well, Plex is no different. Uh, it is great software. Don't get me wrong. Uh, uh, there are features that you do have to pay for. It is 
Um, the basic server is absolutely free. You're free to uh, install it and run it. Um, and, uh, and it's great. But what you do get with a s subscription uh, is advanced features. For example, you've got hardware transcoding. So what hard transcoding does though, and I guess I see why they put this behind uh, subscription, is um, say the media that you are trying to stream out to uh, your friends, uh, your friends and family, is uh, 1080p, you know, uh, is in 1080p format. But the device that they are viewing uh, this media on doesn't support 1080p. Well, hardware transcoding will actually down convert that or make it so the device that they're watching your media on is able to play it. So that's that's pretty cool. Another thing that you would have to pay for are the native apps for any mobile devices. When I say mobile devices, I'm talking about your cell phone, your tablet, um, basically anything that you're able to take with you. With one caveat, your laptop. Laptop, for some reason, isn't considered a mobile device. But if you're trying to view your uh, media server uh, through your, say, your cell phone or your tablet, there are two ways you could watch your media. One, you could always open up a browser and uh, use a web browser to access your Plex media server. Or two, you can download an app, uh, the native Plex app, and uh, access your media that way, which I would actually prefer just because uh, in my experience, it makes streaming your media uh, a little less painful. Now, there is a cost to using the mobile app. It's just a one-time cost. Uh, I believe it's like $5 uh, in the in the app store, uh, but it's also, and I believe it's $5 uh, regardless on either the app store or Google Play. Um, but that will allow you to watch uh, whole movies, uh, shows, or just watch the whole thing. Otherwise, if you don't, um, after about a minute or so, you'll get a warning uh, saying that to continue viewing your uh, content, uh, you do have to purchase the uh, the application. So uh, there's that. And one other con uh, that I've experienced is if you're using like an IPTV service, it will require you to run another uh, Docker container, uh, such as, um, I believe it's called Steve or XTV <laughs> or something like that. Um, or there's another application that you can use. Uh, but if you are just using, you know, like the HD home run uh, and only wanting to stream your local uh, TV channels works just fine. Now let's talk about MB. Uh, MB is something that I pretty much use every day as well. Uh, and, and I argue to say that uh, I actually kind of prefer MB, but I have a use case where MB is the only way that I'd be able to view my content uh, the way that I want to. Now, just like Plex, MB actually isn't too difficult to install either. In my opinion, it's pretty night and day as far as the user experience of using uh, Plex and MB, as far as uh, uh, the apps go, right? You can install uh, this in uh, the same way as you do with Plex. You can either uh, install it as a Docker container, or you can uh, install it on bare metal machine. MB also does uh, cross-platform support. So uh, a lot of TVs, and I didn't bring this up in the uh, uh, Plex section, but um, a lot of TVs, smart TVs nowadays, have Plex as one of the apps that are pre-installed on them. Uh, but I've also seen MB uh, in them as well. And just like Plex, you are able to hook up an HD home run uh, device 
to your server. That way you can stream all of your local channels as well, so that's not any different. It is relatively easy to navigate as well, but as I'll go ahead and put uh, some B-roll in here to show what the two look like. MB also does hardware transcoding just like Plex does. But the one thing that I believe MB has over Plex is uh, uh, customizability. You are able to put in different plugins uh, with MB, uh, such as you're able to pick like, uh, well, I guess Plex does too. Um, but you're able to choose where you get your clip art for all of your media that you're hosting. And I believe where MB does shine, though, uh, compared to Plex, is how they incorporate uh, IPTV services. Now, again, on the cons, because, I mean, I, I put them in air quotes just because they're, they're not necessarily cons, um, but they're more of a... I don't know how to describe it, <laughs> but they're they're not necessarily cons. You can still use them, uh, but uh, just like Plex, there is a uh, payment uh, type thing uh, to go along with it. Uh, hardware transcoding, uh, you need to be you need to have you need to pay uh, a subscription uh, for that. Uh, you also do have to pay the subscription it also gets you the ability to uh, have basically your own dvr um on your server and same with plex uh, plex is the same way uh, that also has a dvr function and one of the things um that uh it, it's a big con for me uh just because in my experience i'm always always having to a login with my username and password and you know how difficult that is especially if you're trying to view it on a tv unless you've got like um a keyboard hooked up to uh to your tv as well but man typing out your username and your password on an on-screen keyboard that that's probably my biggest uh the biggest con for for mb uh in my opinion I believe they're trying to make it so that isn't the case anymore and that it would have more of a uh, kind of like, you know how on YouTube, uh, if you've got multiple accounts or like you've got an account for your wife, you've got an account for your kids, uh, all you got to do is just choose who's, uh, who's watching or whose account you want to access. That's kind of the what Plex has and that I wish MB did have. And I believe that it's, it, it's, it's coming. The same could, be, could actually be said about Jellyfin. The only difference between Jellyfin and MB is that Jellyfin is actually open source. So it's all free. Uh, you don't have to pay for anything. Uh, the one thing that is stopping me from uh, having Jellyfin is the IPTV support. You just, I, you just can't beat how MB is actually how MB supports IPTV. Um, I mean, Jellyfin, if you're watching this, uh, if any of your devs can match that, I'd probably use Jellyfin a little bit more. So, but anyways, that's that. That's pretty much it. Uh, my number one uh, is going to be... I, I re Honestly, I really don't have a number one. I use both Plex and MB um, the same. Uh, the only reason why I mainly go towards MB is if I want to watch, you know, television shows. Um, otherwise, I'm always on Plex. But... What you can do in Plex, you can also do on MB. So 
it's a matter of preference. If you have any other questions uh, regarding Plex or MB or even Jellyfin, leave them in the comments down below. In a future video, I know I've already got like uh, how to's on how to install Plex, but I'm going to go ahead and remake them. Uh, I'll also do one for MB as well. And one of the questions that I got on uh, the Plex how to install video was how to enable hardware transcoding. I'll go ahead and uh, get into that. So if that sounds good to you and you want to start uh, building your own media player or your own media server, subscribe down below. That'll be awesome. It'll really help out uh, the channel. And also hit that like button as well. So until next time, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'm glad to be back again. Uh, but until next time, peace.